Surrounded by flourishing hillsides, abundant foliage, and a spring-fed lake, the Self-Realization Fellowship Lake Shrine was founded in 1950 by Paramahansa Yogananda, a spiritual teacher. He developed the gardens to give people a beautiful place to reflect, meditate, and enjoy nature's beauty. The landscaping here is, is really extraordinarily beautiful. I love the, the rocks and then just all the different flowers and then the lovely big trees. It feels tropical and little parts that feel English and it, it's really quite lovely. When the founder first got this property, he actually came out here with some of his monastic disciples, his monks, and they started planting all the things you see around here. He himself chose many of the trees where they would be and actually supervised exactly where they would be placed. It's really quite a perfect place. And this having the, the lake here is uh, also very nice because the calmness of the water gives the opportunity to, again, be, feel more calm. Some people who know about it come here if they're troubled to get this peaceful environment to let their troubles sort of wash out. And some people come here every week and never become connected with Self-Realization Fellowship in any other way except they love these grounds and come here and enjoy them. At the Lake Shrine, palm and cedar trees sway high above evergreens and tall grass that line the lake's banks. Waterfalls, unique architecture, and spiritual statues have been carefully placed throughout the garden to give a sense of peace and serenity to visitors. Rachel believes that even those who already have a garden can benefit from these beautiful public parks. Just to seek out these beautiful public places that you really can just enjoy nature, you can sit, you can reflect, you can enjoy the beauty, you can enjoy just the smells, maybe if there's fresh flowers around, and also enjoy like-minded people that also are just looking for those quiet moments in life and can really just appreciate being in nature's wonderment. Rachel reminds us that a public garden gives us a chance to enjoy someone else's vision. Just sitting amongst beautiful nature and often nature that different to what your own garden might be which is all about you and what we want to put in our own gardens. When you're in a public place it really has been left to somebody else whether it's just pure nature in its purest form. So it's None of our control, but nevertheless, it's a place we can go to, we can just really enjoy everything about it and find those quiet moments. In the end, whether private or public, gardens will always be essential to our lives. All we really need to remember to do is to enjoy them and to use them because they're there to nourish us, they want to be enjoyed, they want to be seen, and so that's really all we have to do is just enjoy them.